to fight against our sin and our sinful nature because Jesus already has victory. This passage here that Jesus gave us authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. So He has given us that, that authority already. So we have the authority over Satan. Jesus has already have victory over Satan. So we are not we are not to defeat Satan. Satan is already defeated. We are to claim Jesus' victory and we share his victory together and we don't give the devil a foothold so that he cannot come to steal, kill and destroy. So we we must understand that it's Jesus who has victory, not us. It's not us to have victory over Satan. It's Jesus who has victory over Satan. And then when we submit to God, God is very happy and God will bless us and give us victory. Okay, and then a third passage, James 4, 7, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So we submit to God, we have a good relationship with God, and resist the devil. Now resist is not fighting, resist. Just don't let Satan change our thoughts, change our life. Don't let Satan affect our life. So resist the devil and then he will flee from you. So here it talks about how we can victory over Satan. So this passage is about how we can have victory. Okay, explanation of Luke 10, 19. Jesus has total authority over Satan and he gives us the same authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. Nothing shall hurt us because Jesus will protect His children and He treasures us. So nothing can hurt us that we don't have to be afraid of any kind of attack. If we have a close relationship with God and if we take care of our sins and any problem in our life and whenever we have any sin we ask God to forgive us and we obey God uh, uh, with all our mights as much as possible to obey God, then not to give the devil a foothold. And then, you know, so the relationship with God will protect us. God will protect us. Not, you know, it's, it's not for us to defeat Satan. Jesus has already defeated Satan. We share his victory. When we share his victory, Satan is already under our feet. Satan is already under our feet. And what we need to do is to keep the relationship with God and obey Him and follow Him so that the devil has no foothold into our life. An explanation of 2 Corinthians 10, 4-5 Our warfare is to cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So all the arguments and every high thing, that means every proud idea that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So our warfare is to bring our thought to submit to God and take away all the proud ideas and also to help other Christians to submit to God and not to be proud of ourselves and to uh, let God rule our life totally. So our warfare is to help people to humble themselves to God and to bring every thought to be in submission to Christ. So our warfare is to help people to humble themselves and to bring every thought to be submission to Christ, to help people to submit to Christ. And then we can use uh, God's nature and grace to motivate them. When we submit to Christ, actually God will exalt us and our life will go higher and higher. When we submit to Satan, then we'll lose everything. He will come to steal, kill and destroy. But when we submit to God, God is very happy and God will bless our life and He will give us more things and He will be blessed. He will bless us. And when we humble ourselves and submit ourselves to God, then God can work in our lives and do wonderful things in our lives. So when we submit ourselves, uh, humble ourselves and submit ourselves to God, then God can work in our lives. He will continue to work in our life and do wonderful things in our lives. Okay, explanation of James 4, 7. When we submit to God and resist the devil, the devil will flee from us. The word resist in Greek is anthistami. 
it's G436. So you can look for 436 Greek online and then it will give you the explanation. It means its meaning includes set against, withstand, resist, oppose. It does not mean fight. It's to withstand, to stop him coming to us, to resist him. Jesus has already defeated, defeated Satan. We submit to God and claim Jesus' victory and resist Satan's tricks. Then Satan will flee from us. So we have, when we have a close relationship with God and we don't give the devil a foothold, we, we uh, take care of our lives, then we will experience him more and more and God's presence will bring more and more blessings to our life. And, and then we have victory. We share the victory with Christ. Okay, theme, this uh, message, the theme is, what is the warfare against Satan? How we can have victory over Satan? So what is the warfare against Satan? And how we can have victory over Satan? Now here I have a picture here. There are some people who think that they have to defeat Satan by their own shouting and power. They often have fear of their insufficiency. That some people think that to have victory is to shout to Satan. Actually, our prayer should be mainly toward God, not against Satan. But some people spend a lot of time shouting, screaming against Satan. Um, it's, it's better to come to God and believe in God's love and power and say, God, you're loving me, you're blessing me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And God will bless us. God, you have victory over every power. You have victory over Satan. I can trust in you. I can relax in you. So, so instead of spending, you know, some people spend a lot of time shouting towards Satan and say, can Satan go away, Satan go away, Satan go away. Um, it's not for us to defeat Satan. It's Jesus already. Jesus already defeated Satan. And he has given us authority to trample on Satan. So we can just trample on Satan and say, Satan, you are defeated by Jesus already. I don't uh, give you any foothold. I trust in God. You have no power here at all. So the key is to trust in God's goodness and His power and authority and not to spend time just uh, shouting against Satan. You know, when people spend a lot of time shouting uh, toward Satan, shouting against Satan. It's better to spend more time enjoying God and His love. And then people who know that Jesus already has victory and they are claiming Jesus' victory have guarantee of victory over Satan. So when people who know that Jesus already has victory, He has victory, and they are claiming Jesus' victory, they have guarantee of victory over Satan. They know for sure that Satan has no power over them. Now, there are people who told me that when I go to the mission field, when I cast out demons, then Satan can attack me. I said, this is not biblical. In Mark 16, it talks about that miracles will follow those who believe, that in His name that will cast out demons. And then the Lord is with us always to uh, perform miracles, to uh, uh, to convince people to, uh, to prove the validity of the Word of God. So Jesus has promised us that He'll be with us when we go and make disciples of all nations. He'll be with us always to the end of the ages. So Jesus has already claimed to be with us. He has victory over Satan. He is with us. So when we, do, we, when we follow God to do mission work and to cast out demons, we don't have to fear Satan at all. But there are some people who told me that when you go to mi the mission field and cast out demons, then Satan will attack you. Satan will attack only when we have footholds for the devil. So we don't want to give the devil a foothold. We want to trust in God's power, 
uh, and trust in his uh, his blessings his protection I also know people that <coughs> uh, very often they they say oh I have uh, I have a fever today. Satan is attacking me. Whenever they have any problem, they say Satan is attacking me. When they have fights in the family, they say Satan is attacking me. They should ask themselves, what have they done wrong? For instance, when they have fights in the family, it's their own sin. So instead of blaming Satan, they should repent to God and trust in God and have peace with the family have love for the family members and forgive the family members, be nice to them. That is how we can have victory in our family relationship. Some people would say that all problems come from Satan. Now there are three enemies of Christians. First is the sinful nature, the world, and Satan. It's only when we, you know, sin our sinful nature will follow our sinful nature that will give the devil a foothold. If we have a close relationship with God and trust Him and obey Him all the time, the devil will not have a foothold to attack us. So we don't have to be afraid. We have confidence. But I know many Christians, they, they, they always are afraid and whenever anything wrong they will say, is Satan attacking me? And they are afraid and they will ask all kinds of questions. What happened? What happened? And I would just say, build up a relationship with God. And trust in God and love God and believe in God and enjoy God. And at the same time, we see if we have any sin, any negative thinking and negative emotions and negative uh, action toward people, negative relationship. We take care of all these things. Then we don't give the devil a foothold. Many of these people who have problems, they just blame Satan. They don't try to find the problem in their own life. For instance, some people think that, oh, they have the spirit of anger. And then they cast out the demon, uh, the spirit of anger, then they don't have anger anymore. That's not true. You know, it's, spiritual life is not just built up by casting out demons. So they spend more time praying against Satan than praying to God. We pray to God, we don't spend time uh, praying against Satan. So they will say, cast out, cast out the demons of anger. Demon of anger, come out, come out, come out. And they think that when they cast out the demon of anger, then they will have more, uh, then they won't have any anger anymore. What we need to do is to build up the relationship and then we'll say, why are we angry? What are we unhappy about? Do we have unrealistic expectation? Do we expect more from people than what they can do? Do we expect people to be nice to us? So when they are not nice, then we are angry. So we, when we realize this, then we say, it doesn't matter. We don't have to, uh, you know, the good, all the goodness comes from God. We don't have to think of getting goodness from people. If they give us goodness, that is great. But our blessings is from God. So we trust in God and then when people have problem, we say, it doesn't matter because the Lord is for us, who is against us. So I don't have to be afraid. No one can be against us. So we, we don't have to be afraid of, of wicked people or people who are angry. We don't have to take their anger. That way we have victory. So we, it's not just casting out demons. It's also submitting our mind to God, submitting our anger to God, our negative thinking, our negative expectation of people to God so that we can be peaceful all the time. When we are peaceful all the time, then we're not afraid of people. Then we're not affected by people. Okay, here again the outline. So I hope, you know, now you don't have to write outlines the same way as I do. I suggest that you follow that outline. Uh, when you do that, it's uh, then you make sure that then you'll have the part of God's nature and His grace and how to live out God's nature and grace. Now, even if you use other methods, out, out, other outlines is fine, but make sure you have these two elements that you talk about God's nature and His goodness and also talk about uh, how we can live out God's nature and grace. So, uh, but then uh, at least you can do this. If you do this, 
I'll give you a pass. I haven't seen a pass yet. I haven't seen a pass yet so far in the assignment. I hope that you will follow this so that you will talk about God's goodness and how we can live out God's goodness. It's very important, both about God's goodness and how we can live out God's goodness. Now, some people are afraid of attacks from Satan. They are afraid to cast out demons from people or go into mission work. Something that any sickness or interpersonal problems are attacks from Satan. And many Christians also give Satan a foothold when they sin. And some Christians are courageous. These are positive examples. These are negative examples. Some Christians are courageous to cast out demons and bring people from witchcraft to Christianity. So they, they, are, they are not afraid of Satan. They are, they are courageous to bring people from all the occults, to Jesus and God's nature and grace God is total victory over Satan when Jesus died for our sins Jesus also said that he could cast out demons because he has bound the strong man Satan so Jesus has total victory over Satan and he died for us and he said we can cast out demons because he has bound he he could cast out demons because he has bound the strong man so he has defeated the strong man so he can uh, take uh, uh, he can uh, take all the things from from Satan and two Jesus has promised to give us the authority over all the power of the enemy he has given us that authority we have authority over all the enemy three God can do wonderful things in our lives when we submit our mind and our lives to God, He can do great, great things through us. So, God can do wonderful things in our life. So when we submit our mind and lives to God, He can do great things. He gives us the authority. And why many Christians are afraid of attacks? Okay, and a number of Christians are attacked. Okay, uh, so many people are afraid. Now, also, that's true that some Christians are attacked by Satan, by demons, because they have sinned. There is a false teaching that sickness, interpersonal, and church problems are attacks from Satan. So, uh, there is a false teaching that sickness, or any interpersonal problem, or person, uh, church problems, or their own sins. For instance, uh, anger, frustration, adultery they all say that all this come from satan now satan will attack us when we commit adultery but the first source is people's lust we want to take responsibility for our sins the first cause of sin is the the lust of people then they give the devil a foothold when we are christians and when we have a close relationship with god then Satan cannot um, cause us to commit adultery. Only when we give in to sins, then Satan can uh, cause us, you know, then can bring adultery to us. But when we have a good relationship with God, we don't have to be afraid of Satan. So many Christians sin and give the devil a foothold to attack them. And many Christians just care about themselves and don't think of bringing people to Christ as a way to attack Satan. So the way to attack Satan is by bringing people to Christ. So why many Christians are afraid? Because, uh, you know, and also afraid of the attacks and also, okay, this is one complete sentence. Why many Christians are afraid of attacks and a number of Christians are attacked by demons. So why is, does that happen? Because of the false teaching that sickness or sins or interpersonal or church problems are attacks from Satan. So every time there are problems, they will blame it on they will blame it on Satan. And many Christians sin and give the devil a foothold. So the devil attack them. And they don't care about themselves and they don't carry out God's plan to save people, uh, to bring people to Christ. That's the way to attack Satan to bring people to Christ. Now, when someone has demons, then we cast out demons. 
But some people think that, okay, they go to church and then they cast out demons from the church. When we praise God, when we love God, demons will go away from the church. Uh, that when, where Jesus rules, Satan cannot stay. So the way to cast out demons from the church is by loving God. God is the one who has victory. But some people will just shout, against Satan. Satan go away from this church, Satan go away. And this is not biblical. Rather, it's God, Jesus who have victory over Satan. How we can have victory over Satan? First, trust that Jesus has victory over Satan. He has total victory. And build up a close relationship with God and turn away from all sins. For sins give footholds to devil, to Satan. So have a close relationship and turn away from all sins because the sins will give the devil footholds and build up our spiritual life and ability to serve God. And this is a weapon to defeat Satan. When we serve God, when we bring people to Christ, then we are defeating Satan. And submit our thoughts and our lives to God, and then we can have victory in Christ. So submit our whole life and our thoughts to God, and then, then we can have victory in Jesus. That when we think of sinful thoughts, when we have lust, when we have anger, we submit to God and say, using the five steps to victory, that first, I'm aware of my sins and my anger or my lust. Second, I know that they are destructive. Third, what does the Bible teach us? To have a close relationship with God and say no to the sins. Four, pray for forgiveness and for power. Five, submit to God and not to uh, continue to have sinful thoughts or lustful th thoughts. So submit our thoughts and lives to God. Five, when we submit to God and resist the devil, the devil will flee from us. He will flee from us. So we resist the devil, resist the, uh, the temptation of the devil. Six, do evangelism and make disciples. This is taking people from Satan's hands. So we we uh, do evangelism, bring people to believe in Jesus, and also make them disciples to love God and follow God and obey God. And seven, the Bible does not talk about victory over Satan by screaming at Satan. So the Bible does not talk about that. Even casting out demons, we don't have to scream now. Some people scream and well, it's not forbidden if they want to scream, but first it's bad for the voice. Second, is our relationship with God and help this person to also have relation, a strong relationship with God. When he trusts in God's goodness, when he wants to say no to sins, then Satan, seed demons will go away quickly. So we want to, first we want to build up a strong relationship with God and trust in God all the time and obey God and love God. And then we want to uh, help people, the people we want to drive out the demons, to, to love God and trust in God and also to take care of the anger and the sins and the worry uh, and the hurt feelings, all this, when they take care of that, believe that God is loving them, God is blessing them, they, they don't have to worry, they don't have to be angry, they don't have to feel hurts, they, they can overcome these negative feelings then instead of screaming. Now we can cast out demons, but we don't have to scream all the time. And we don't have to cast out demons all the time. Now, one time I was on a mission field. I was praying with someone just to love God and believe that God is loving us. So I just pray like this. Thank you, Jesus. You are loving us. We thank you. We love you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And there was demons uh, manifestation on that person. And I continue to praise God and love God and the manifestation continue to come and demons continue to go away. And there was one person who said to me, are you casting out demons? I said, yes. And then she said, why aren't you saying demons come out? I said, you see that when I'm loving God, demons are already leaving. Now, we can cast out demons, you know, and then I said, okay, demons come out. But it's not the only step. It's not the only way. We can cast out demons by loving God, by praising God, by obeying God. The demons will come out. So some people will spend a long time casting out demons, shouting, shouting. 
and uh, the person we cast out demons from that person might you know get numb instead we can tell them God is loving you God wants to bless you trust in God relax in God believe that God is blessing you and relax and God will help you and bless you and and praise God and rejoice in the Lord so we can do this kind of things and or sing songs sing praises to God and then the demons will also come out so it's casting out the demon commanding the demons to leave is not the only way to cast out demons we can cast out the demons by loving God relaxing in God and trusting in God okay and the challenge Jesus has given us full authority over Satan do you still live under the fear that Satan will attack you from time to time so he has given us full authority over Satan we don't have to be afraid are you still afraid we don't have to be afraid Satan is afraid of us let me tell you one experience I had one time I was in a church that I serve uh, and then one person came into the church he walked into the church and then he said wow this place is clean I said what do you mean you know it's clean all the time he said uh, that means you know what he meant is there's no demons inside I said do you see demons all the time he said yes there's always one demon following me and then I see demons on the street all the time so I asked him where is the demon that follows you he said the demon says he wants to wait outside the church so I said okay let's walk to, toward him and then we walk and then immediately he said wow the demons doesn't have to go away so quickly the demons fly away and then I asked him okay so you see demons on the street right he said yes and then we will go out and then ask him is there any demon out here he said yes there's one far away there okay I said let's walk over there and then as soon as we start walking he said oh the demons went away so I said to him you know demons are afraid of us and demons are bad don't follow the demon don't let the demon follow you believe in Jesus and follow Jesus so we see that demons are afraid of us we if we have a close relationship with God so I hope that we all believe that I don't have to be afraid of Satan I have victory over Satan because of Jesus because Jesus a victory over Satan already I don't have to be afraid of Satan so when we have a close relationship with God and take care of our problems in life there is nothing that we need to fear three we need to learn to discern biblical ways and non biblical ways biblical ways even if a lot of people think they can have victory by screaming at Satan and casting demons out from the church or the area we don't need to follow their way the Bible only talks about casting demons out of people so the Bible only talks about casting out demons from people not from not from an area or from a church the Bible doesn't talk about that now I'm not against that totally what I mean is if someone wants to do that let him do that but I think it's better to praise God and love God because casting out demons doesn't build up our relationship with God but loving God and worshiping God and honoring God and believing that God is blessing us will build up our relationship with God and building up our relationship with God will do all kinds of good things for us and cast out the demons now some people said in Daniel chapter 10 there it talks about uh, uh, the prince of uh, Persia and Greek and Greece but you read through the whole book of Daniel you don't find say uh, Daniel casting out casting away the the prince the prince of uh, of Persia and Greece uh, it's the work of God to do that it's not for Daniel to do that <coughs> <coughs> So it's, <coughs> so it's always God who defeats Satan and we follow God and we trust in God's goodness and the Bible doesn't have 
you know, prayer of casting out spirit of anger, of spirit of lust from people. The Bible doesn't have that. The Bible doesn't talk about that as a way to overcome anger or lust or any other kinds of sin. So we can serve God boldly with fear, without fear, without, I'm sorry, without fear. We don't have to be afraid of Satan attacking us. If we trust in God and take care of our sins, then we don't have to be afraid. Okay, so again, the four main points here. So I hope you remember this and do your assignments like this. You can start with this. If you write, you know, in any other way, it's fine. But make sure you have the part of God's nature and grace and also how we can live out God's nature. Okay, so the four points in the outline you can have is first, negative examples and positive examples of people to wake people up that even though we have authority, there are many Christians who don't believe in authority, who don't, don't live in the authority of God. So the negative examples and positive examples. And then number two, God's nature and grace that He wants to give us. And number three, why many people don't live out this God's uh, nature and grace. And for how we can live out God's nature and grace. So I hope you do assignments like this. And, uh, and I hope there is someone who passed at least one, one assignment first. Okay, Romans 12, 1. Now when you do 10 assignments complete that I passed, then you can have a certificate. Uh, but I want you that 10 assignments to be on different areas, not just sermons. There are other areas that I've taught. Uh, so there's other areas. I will talk about that more, explain that more in the groups.